Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. I have been deep in communion with the Lord. When I felt him calling me to just stop and be with him. And in fact, I heard him say to me, you don't have to do anything to earn my love. You don't have to be anything. Just let me love you. And he called me into this time of deep rest away from basically everything and solitude with him. And I think so many of us are afraid to do that. After a very long journey through the institutional church system, I was exhausted and I didn't really understand why or what had happened. And so I felt called to come make this video and share my insights with you about how the Lord has taught me to rest in Him and to stop this sort of performative Christianity where I have to do all these things and check all these boxes out of duty and obligation to God in order to be a good Christian. And I think I've become a much better one. And so today I wanted to talk about, you know, that the Lord really wants to know you and He really wants you to know Him. Obviously, he knows us perfectly, but what God really calls us into, what Jesus really invites us into is a deep, intimate, personal relationship with him based in unconditional love and mercy and grace and peace and forgiveness, where we stop striving and living from our own self-will, which I didn't even realize I was still doing at least half the time. And we come into deep communion and fellowship with him. We fully receive his spirit when we're born from above. And we allow him to sort of infuse his life into us via the Holy Spirit. A lot of us aren't really taught how to do that, right? We may be saved by grace through faith or whatever our doctrine is from our denomination. And then we're told we have to do all these things to be good enough for God. But that really just played on my old traumas and fears and pains from the past and all my old patterns. So it wasn't just the religious system, right? It was also my flesh. It was also in me. And it was also original sin, which is when humanity decided to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? Saying, we don't need you, God. We got this. We can be good all on our own and we can not do bad things all by ourselves. And, you know, many thousands of years later, I think we can say that that was a failed experiment, probably the wrong choice, but God loves us enough to give us free will. And so the choice, the salvation, the invitation is to live by the indwelling life of God's spirit, not our own. But then we begin this battle between the flesh and the new spirit within us called regeneration as the Lord begins to transform us by his spirit. I fell into illness and suffering again, and I was so confused because I felt like I was doing everything right to please God. But what I couldn't see was, there's nothing I can do to please God besides receive his son. And that when God looks down from heaven, Father God, he sees his son's perfection in us and Perfectionism was a sort of pattern of my past that led to all sorts of obsession and attempts at control, and it was all based in my fear that if I'm not perfect now that I've received God's love, God won't love me. And today is the two-year anniversary of when our Lord Jesus revealed himself to me, I'm going to tear up a little bit, <laughs> in all his beauty and magnificence and glory with his perfect, pure heart that I knew was not my own, and I surrendered my whole life to him. And it happened through a Bible verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, which many Christians misuse, um, but I had never heard it before. For you know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And the scales lifted from my eyes, and I knew that God was everything good and wonderful, that none of the things I had survived were his will necessarily, though I do believe God is sovereign and he allows suffering for the ultimate good, not just our own to bring us back to him, but for the good of all. 
and his eternal plan and purpose of which we are one part. I think I expected then my life to just magically, you know, snap and everything was gonna be perfect and in order. I think a lot of us want good things from God and we spend a lot of time really caught up in that fear of survival, of not getting our needs met. And so we spend a lot of time praying to God to meet our needs and worrying and stressing and falling into anxiety because we've been living before that by the heavy bondage to the ruler of this world. And even as Christians and believers, it's easy to fall back into that through our flesh again. It's not something to be ashamed of. God is gracious and patient and he wants us to learn how. So I've created a free resource if you sign up for my email list if you want to do that. It's an ebook called Three Simple Steps to Resting in God's Love, and it's a very simple process, not really so much of doing it all, but you can read that. There's a self-assessment that can help you assess where you're at. Are you living by your own will or not? Because it's tricky, and so I created that for you all. It's totally free, and you can find the link below. But Jesus said to us, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. But a lot of us can get caught up in our distress, our striving, the way the enemy wants us to live our lives, constantly exhausted and trying to make life happen. I feel like God is very understanding about that. You know, he said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. When we take the yoke of the Lord upon us as I did two years ago, we're sort of learning to live by his grace, learning to live by his life within us, learning to live and rest in his peace. And like I said, that's a learning process, right? He said, learn for me. He didn't say get it perfect and have it all worked out immediately as soon as you receive my spirit. It's a lifelong process and anyone who tells you differently is either deluding themselves or trying to delude you. <laughs> and so I'm back, perfectly imperfect, made perfect by Jesus, not myself, because I realized after taking down all my videos when I felt like they weren't good enough, when I felt like they weren't perfect enough, that if I wait until I feel perfect and my whole life is perfect and wonderful in a fairy tale, which, spoiler alert, it's never going to be because I live in a fallen, broken world. It'll never happen. I'll never do this and I'll never get to share my insights with you from the Lord. And I believe, oh, sorry, I'm tearing up with my whole heart that I'm here to help people learn how to thrive with Christ after they've suffered and been broken by the heavy yoke and bondage of this world by all the sin and suffering that we go through when we're born into it, things that we do, things that are done to us. And um, I feel that I'm spiritually thriving with the Lord. My health is restoring. But, you know, honestly, it's not perfect. And I woke up this morning and just realized, like, honestly, I don't even care. If I never came to full health and all the things that the Lord has promised me, and I know that he will deliver them all in his way and time, I have no doubt left about that. Our God is an awesome God, and he cannot lie. Um, but even if I didn't see those promises, I would still follow him forever. And I still have this beautiful, perfect peace that's always available to me, even if I fall out of it, because something in life starts to weigh me down again. He can always bring me back to it. So check out that ebook if that's something you want to learn more about. And I'll just share that simple process with you there. All I know for sure is that the Lord loves you just as you are. He wants to help you feel peace. He wants to prosper you. And that begins by learning to live by his spirit more deeply and coming into deep communion with him maybe a year or so into knowing the Lord, when I was getting caught up in all the sort of performative things I had to do for him to love me, not that any of those things are necessarily bad, you know. I love to pray. I love to read my Bible. I love to hear a good sermon or teaching. I love to spend time in fellowship with other believers. I love serving God. Just that when we do those things out of duty and obligation, not out of the spontaneous love, in our hearts, it can end up becoming a heavy yoke, a heavy burden that he never really wanted us to take on. 
And so he said to me one night, will you spend some time with me? I heard those words and it just stabbed me in the heart. Like, of course, like the Lord wants to spend time with me and he wants to spend time with you too. And sometimes that means just letting go of all the things you think you need to do to be with him and just resting. So I just, I developed a daily habit and a daily practice of doing that. And that is why I'm so connected to him. And still sometimes I forget or I don't feel it all the time. But the Lord wants to have a deep, close, personal, intimate relationship with you, between you and him. And I believe from that relationship, we can begin to heal and grow and thrive in Christ and receive all the promises and abundant blessings that he has for us in this life on every level. I'm not just talking about money by any stretch of the imagination you know, spiritual prosperity, emotional health and prosperity, mental health and prosperity, community, all of these things that he has for us, love, and it all flows from him. So wherever you're at, I invite you to just make a little time in your day to just stop and rest with the Lord and in the Lord and check out the free resource I've made if you want to learn more about that. And wherever you're at, I just want to say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may you experience more of his peace and his rest than ever before. I'm not sure how often I'll be making videos, but I will continue to make them now. As imperfect as I am and every single one of them will be. Because I don't feel this revelation he's given me is just for me. But I don't want to get caught up in bondage to an algorithm again. And so I look forward to speaking with you again soon. And I wish you well, friends.